before I get started, um, I just want to thank God. If we could just honor God for this moment that we are all standing in. Thank you, Lord. I want to give honor to my apostles, Apostle Dwayne and Apostle Cheryl. Stand up for a moment and honor our apostles. I would not be standing here if it wasn't specifically for Apostle Dwayne. <clears throat> but <laughs> um, but um, I honor you both. Thank you so much for pouring into me. Um, I, this is an honor to just stand here. Every time I come here, I, I really think that um, I'm surprised that you guys trust me with, with your platform. Um, I do not take it lack, um, lightly. Um, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to dwell with you, to be in your presence. Your presence is here. And I thank you, Lord, for using me. I ask that you decrease me so that they will only see you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for even crafting the words in my mouth, Lord. I thank you that the word will come across clear. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that this word will be something that is transformative that it will be something that will be implanted in their hearts, their minds, and their souls, and they can take it with them to use it in their lives. I ask God that your Holy Spirit be present throughout this entire word. God, I ask God that you would use me like never before, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening, y'all. Good evening, good evening. So, I only need, I told Apostle Cheryl I wouldn't preach for three minutes, so I need like four and a half, okay? That's all I need, like four and a half. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm excited, though, um, about this word. It's something that God gave me, and I really only have one thing to tell you tonight, but um, we're going to take some time getting there, okay? Um, I'm honored because, as you guys know, if you guys were at the Destiny Summit, I just got as a pastor and I can honestly say my life has been changed and shifted since uh, that moment of ordination um, and I can say that it, it wasn't something that I was expecting you know I'm thinking you know we're going about life you know I serve that's that's my life I do ministry I serve God with my life um, but but it's been different for me um, the Sunday Prior to uh, my ordination service, we had house church at my house, and um, God showed up in my living room, and it was it was amazing, and, and I think God did that just for me to reaffirm what he's doing in my life, um, and I'm honored that I'm able to, to do that here at BGC, honestly. Um, so tonight, if you could just give me like five minutes of your time. You know, we went up to five. It was at four and a half, okay? Um, <laughs> right direction, right? All right. Uh, I want to talk to you about being an apostolic believer, all right? Um, we're in our um, series, our revival series, and um, but I want to talk about being an apostolic believer and what that looks like in our context, Okay. Um, as an apostolic believer, we are called to go into territories, into regions, regions, into nations, into cities, and to transform them for the kingdom of God, right? We are the sent ones. Sometimes those that are people that are new to this concept and the idea of the apostolic, not the denomination, um, they may be a little bit confused at what that would look like. So tonight, I want to tell you what God gave to me, <laughs> all right? Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about the revelation that God gave to me about what that looks like for me. Um, and, and what I want to tell you is, as an apostolic believer, you don't want to, and I'll say this is something that I've done in the past, is you compare yourself to other people and what, they're, what they look like and how they serve God and how God uses them. But I'm here to tell you that it's not always, you're not going to look like everybody else. God wants to use you and your makeup and how he made you. Amen. Um, Apostle Dwayne started out um, at the beginning of the year, he preached a sermon on territorial deliverance. And he made this statement and he said, you will never operate at your full capacity 
until you understand who you are. Is that what you said? All right. <laughs> You'll never operate at your full capacity until you fully understand who you are. Discovering who you are and what God has placed on the inside of you is imperative, okay, to transforming cities and nations and being an apostolic believer. Taking some time to even just sit with God to figure out your own nuances, what makes you you and who you are, right, is very important. So you want to take some time to even take it a step further and become confident in the current version of yourself. The current version of yourself, considering the fact that you're always changing, you're always evolving. I can tell you right now, the Shantae that you see standing before you is not the same person, Shantae, from two weeks ago. Okay? So something that I'm constantly working on is falling more in love and being more confident with the current version of Shantae. So that's going to lead me to my very first point, which is it's personal. One of my favorite sermons uh, that Apostle Cheryl preached was the title is personal. Um, but we're going to look at it from a couple different ways this evening. You in particular, like I said, it's personal. So I want you to think about yourself. You are important to God. He cares about you so much so that he wants to spend all of his time with you. Right? Y'all ever been in a relationship and somebody wanted to take up all your time because they love you so much and like all of your time? Okay. Well, that's how God feels about you. He wants to spend all of his time with you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to be in a relationship with you, like, all the time. Every moment of every day, he wants to talk to you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to communicate with you. All of those things, right? And he wants you to, to want to spend time with him and to dwell with him. The closer you get to God, the closer he will then get to you. And Matthew uh, chapter 27, verse 51, it says, it talks about the curtain being torn, right? And what I love about this is in that moment, we no longer had to, someone else had to go to God for us. We now have this opportunity to have this up close and personal relationship with God. We have the opportunity to be in his presence all the time. There is no limit to it. God's presence can be inside of us and with us at all time. Um, and I think about the lengths that God went to just so we can have this access. <sighs> think about the lengths and the things that Jesus went to just so we could have this access. But we don't always take advantage of the fact that we have access, right? In that moment, like I said, the um, curtain was torn and we now have full access to the full power of God and we don't take advantage of it. God is constantly speaking to us, trying to get our attention, trying to get us to come closer, trying to get us to be nearer to him. Why? Because it's personal, right? Because he wants to be with us. He wants to have that close relationship with us. And it all starts with us. God left the Holy Spirit in the earth as a gift. And if you don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, First, then how can someone else encounter the Holy Spirit? How can someone else encounter Jesus if you ain't got Jesus, right? Um, so, yes, your personal walk with Jesus matters because that's where it starts. It's just the beginning, okay? It's just the beginning. It starts with your personal relation, relationship, your personal encounter with Christ. God gets access to the earth and into people through us. So we say all, all the time, I say all the time that the journey of apostolic believer is critical because you have to be completely filled with the spirit in order for it to be poured out into other people. Let me give you another view. I want to show you how it's also personal is on the inside of us, God has things that he wants to get out of us individually. So what he wants to get out of Shantae is not the same thing he wants to get out of David. That's going to look different. Because it's personal. God wants to develop something inside of me. Sometimes it takes time. And sometimes, as Apostle Wayne told me once, it may just take some discipline and some obedience. Some discipline and obedience. I'm going to tell y'all real quick. One time, six months or so ago, me and Misha said we was going to get up and walk every morning. I said, I'm going to call you in the morning and we're going to go walking. Y'all, guess how many times we went walking? Anybody throw out a number? 
You are right. Who said zero? <laughs> zero. So let's just say <laughs> when it comes to discipline and physical fitness and myself, sorry, I had to throw you in there, Misha. <clears throat> um, it's almost non-existent, right? But sometimes when it comes to your walk with Christ and God developing something in you, it needs you to be disciplined and to be obedient. It also needs you to be submitted, hallelujah, to your leaders. So when your leaders tell you something, your leaders are also speaking for God as well, and you have to be obedient and listen, amen? Sometimes when you show up and you hear a sermon from your apostles or your spiritual parents, the baby on the inside of you leaps, and when you're in the beginning stages, it starts leaping and you have no idea what it means. All you know is they said something and it's like, okay, all right, so what am I supposed to do with that, right? But what I say, that my first point is, it's personal, right? So my baby is not Elder Kiara's baby, right? And she got two babies and I got one. But um, my baby is not her baby. So when it start, when she start leap, starts leaping on the inside, that's something that she has to sit down and some, ha, find some personal time to sit with God and have a conversation about what this baby is on the inside of me and how God wants to use it. Amen. I love the story of Paul. And Acts, if you could pull up the scripture for me, please. Chapter 9. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to start actually at verse one. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of the followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell on the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. That always befounds me, like, how do you know it was Lord? But anyways, we're going to keep moving. The voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. It is my opinion, okay, that in those three days, he took some personal time with God, and God maybe dealt with him on what he wanted to do in him. What do y'all think? Y'all think that's possible? That God wanted to deal with something that was on the inside of him? And I think, in verse 15, it says, the Lord said, go, for Paul is my chosen instrument to take a message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as the people of Israel. So I think maybe had to God had to go through another extreme, because that's a bit much to blind somebody for three days, y'all think? Okay. He had to go through a, another extreme in order to get his attention. Okay. He had to go through, it, through an extreme. Hopefully, you know, we don't have to go through something as extreme for God to get our attention. You know, God put something in you a long time ago, and you just like, oh, I'm just so busy, and I don't, you know, I'm going to act like I don't hear God's voice, and I'm going to keep going to work every day and going to church every day, but I'm never going to birth that thing that God put on the inside of me. You know, hopefully God don't have to blind us and stuff to do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. All right, here it is. He is knocked off of his horse, and he could not see anything. Sure, like I said, it was a bit extreme, but for those three days, God was working on him. He was doing something on the inside of him. This may look different once again for everybody because why? Thank you. It's personal. It's going to look different for everybody. Knowing that all things work together for the good of those who are loved and called according to his purpose. Becoming a, a revivalist, an apostolic believer, or as the title of my sermon is, we're going to get there, a fish on a mountain. It is personal. It is purposeful. And it is intentional. It is personal. It is purposeful and it is intentional. So now we know how much intention God has put inside of you. 
how much intention he has put inside of creating you the way that he has created you. One of my favorite scriptures, because I, I think sometimes I think a little weird, is God has made me so wonderfully complex. I'm like, why I got to think all that? It's because he made me that way, right? He put intention into Shantae because he knew way before I did the things I'm called to do, right? So God is cultivating what's on the inside of us. So now we have to prepare to climb this mountain, all right? We're going to go to Luke chapter 9, verse 57 through 58. As they were traveling on the road, someone said to him, I was following, I will follow you where you wherever you go. Jesus told him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. In this scripture, we know that Jesus is referencing referencing his government when he speaks of his head. His response to this is birthing the church, but Jesus' desire is for the kingdom of God to be on every mountain. Yes? In order for his kingdom to be on every mountain, you need a person, an individual who carries the message of the kingdom on top of those mountains. Yes. All right. So when I say mountain, I mean the seven spheres of influence in society. These are the areas where we have to go into to infiltrate the world. You may be called to a mountain, but you don't infiltrate haphazardly. You have to climb the mountain. When preparing to climb a physical mountain, you have to do physical exercises leading up to the actual climb, altitude training, and you have to get your equipment together. You don't show up at the base of the mountain and just start walking. You have to do your research. Misha, can you help me out for a second? So you don't show up to the mountain and just start walking, right? You got to get your equipment together. You have to do some research. You have to get the right equipment specifically for the mountain. These things right here, which I just looked up, okay, when preparing for this, these are called trekking poles, okay? Have y'all heard of a trekking pole? Have y'all seen one before? All right, these are called trekking poles. These are specific to me because it's personal, all right? Me and my mountain, why? Trekking poles, Misha, don't laugh, take stress off of your joints, all right? The biggest advantage is that they absorb some of the shock your joints take when you are stepping. Anyone that knows me knows that I have a few joint issues, all right? Amen. My doctors recommend that I work out in the pool, but here we are. So if I have to move up this mountain fast, I'm going to need a trekking pole, specifically me. Pastor Shantae, all right? I'm going to need a trekking pole because of my personal issues. So if I want to move up this mountain, that's what I'm going to need to prepare. In my preparation for the mountain, what else would I need? What else would I need to learn? I need to learn the actual language and the culture of the mountain. How do I speak to people? What are the customs and the norms of that mountain? What tools do I need to elevate the, to elevate the mountain without stressing out my joints? without stressing out my joints, right? What does that look like on the mountain of education? For example, when you are preparing to climb the mountain of, ele um, of education, you wanna know what ch challenges, principalities, and what wars against that mountain. The spirit of humanism is the enemy of the mountain of education. Humanism, humanism elevates the human intellect and and it rational, rationalism and it rejects the matters of faith, the supernatural, and what is of God. So the same way that we are climbing the mountain of education, the enemy plots and he schemes on how he's going to get on the top of that mountain too, right? But if I don't do my research and find out what's going to war against me getting on this mountain, I'm not going to go and get a trekking pole. So when my joints start hurting, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to take a break, right? When my joints start hurting, or how about this bag on my back? 
it's going to get heavy eventually. Like if you're not used to hiking up a mountain, then it's going to get heavy and you're going to take it off. And then you get to a certain spot on the mountain and it's time for you to put up camp, but you put your bag down. So now you don't have a tent and you don't have nothing that's going to protect you while you're sleeping at night, right? Because you're not doing your due diligence. You just showed up at the base of the mountain and you started walking, all right? So in preparation for this mountain, mountain, you want to be praying. Nothing gets birthed in the earth without coming through the womb of prayer, all right? So you want to pray for wisdom and understanding for God, specifically me in this mountain of education, the ability to learn and the ability to, and grace to teach. When climbing a real mountain, you also have to go through altitude training. What does that look like? What does that look like? You have to practice spending time in high places. I said, what, what you gotta do? You have to practice spending time in high places so that you can get accustomed to breathing at higher altitudes, hallelujah. When you are in higher altitudes, you have all the stuff, all this stuff with you while you're climbing up these higher altitudes. So now your lungs are fighting to breathe and you have this weight on your back and you have the trekking pole in your hand and you can hardly breathe because if you just showed up at the base of the mountain, you didn't do your altitude training ahead of time, right? So you're climbing this mountain and I can imagine that this weight, once again, is getting heavier and heavier as you're getting up the mountain. As you climb up this mountain, what else happens? All hell begins to break loose in your life. Your car goes, your car decides to break down. Your family starts to get sick. You lose all your friends. Your child gets suspended from school. You get COVID. There's nothing you can do to avoid this. It's going to happen every single time as you begin to climb a mountain, all right? But you have to be prepared with what you need in your bag, all right? Because you prepared. You didn't haphazardly come to the base of this mountain. Hallelujah. You came with what you need in your, um, your bag. But with your altitude training, what you're going to do is you're going to practice going up into high places. Hallelujah. Practice going up into high places. You're going to practice hosting the presence of God in your car, in your living room, in your classroom, in your office, on your keyboard, on the sidewalk, on our 6 a.m. walks, hallelujah. We're going to practice hosting the presence of God. That way when you get into on your mountain and something happens, you're used to hearing the voice of God. So when God says, don't say it like that, say it like this, you can hear God's voice because you're used to communing and talking to him, yes? So we're climbing up this mountain and things start getting heavy and, you know, your car broke down and now you got to find a ride and your kid is, you know, in the hospital and all this stuff is happening. And you're saying, why do I want to keep climbing this mountain? And you're going to say, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then you pick up your trekking pole and you climb your mountain. Yes? All right. My third point is you're on this mountain and now we're going to be a fish on the mountain. So I was having a conversation with my apostle mom I was having this conversation and I was telling her how, you know, if you all know my story, I transitioned careers and I, I was like, I feel like I'm a fish on the mountain. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Like, and I had to use the extreme because I'm just not a fish out of water. Like I'm way far from, okay. So God, what I, what God was trying to show me and what I really want to tell you, all right, is God uses everything. Okay, the strength of your message is in your identity in Christ, but also in who you are and in your story. So everything that you've been through, God is going to use it on the mountain. Amen. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its taste, then how can it be made salty? 
It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city situated on the hill cannot be hidden. No one's lights, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. When you are climbing up this mountain, and you're, just to be clear, you're an apostolic believer, a revivalist on this mountain, like, you're going to stand out, even when you don't want to stand out. I told me, <laughs> I tell Misha, I'm sorry, y'all. People are going to follow you. People are going to want to come talk to you. People are going to be like, oh, what, what she got? What he got? I want, I want some of that. And you have, you're like, why they keep coming to me? I text her one day. I said, I want a different type of light today. Can I be like, y'all know those bug zappers? With the, I said, can I be that? <laughs> I just, but guess what? You can't. You have to be a light, and you have to have something to give people because they're coming. Yeah. They're coming anyways. So you have to have something to give people. And now that you are on this mountain and you are a light on this mountain, you can't get there and just get comfortable. You have to make change. Here's the thing. Whether you want to or not, the light that's on the inside of you is going to shine and it's going to attract people. You don't have the luxury to show up to work and decide that I'm going to start working at 10 instead of at 8. I'm going to just sit here at my desk and twiddle my thumbs. And I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so I'm going to catch an attitude when my coworker walks in my classroom 10 times in the middle of teaching. Or um, when my boss come to my desk and asks me to run these reports, I don't feel like it. You don't have the luxury of deciding to do that as an apostolic believer. Because what are we trying to do? We're trying to bring the kingdom of God, the message of the kingdom, to the mountain. So if you're carrying the message of the kingdom, you can't have an attitude every time somebody talks to you. You have to operate in a level of excellence every time you step into a room. Not just at work, but in the grocery store. Every single time someone interacts with you, you have to operate with this level of excellence and the, the idea of you bringing the kingdom of God into that area. Um, yeah, so God is also your sustainer in all things in life. What does that mean? When I said out of my mouth, I feel like a fish on a mountain, I don't have what it takes to do this job with what I was thinking to myself. I don't have a degree. I'm here to tell you that God desires for you to move to the top of the mountain, and it doesn't matter your background, your history, your makeup, and God will qualify you, and he will also sustain you. He will tell you what to say and how to say it. All at the same time, you have to remember at the beginning, we talked about it being personal. So you spending time with God, you figuring out who you are in God, figuring out what your gifts are, how God wants you to use them, serving in church, going to Bible study, being obedient to your leaders, being obedient to God, saying no when God tell you to say no. All of that is training. If you will, it's a trust exercise. All right. It's a trust exercise. God wants to see if he can trust you with his message on the mountain. Can God trust you with his government on the mountain of family? Can God trust you with the message of the kingdom on the mountain of the government? Tonight, God specifically wants me to speak to people who feel like their history is too ugly like Paul. That you've messed up too many times. You feel like you can't be used because of who you were or who you are. I'm here to tell you that Satan is the father of every single lie. And not only has God qualified you, but he also has equipped you and he also will sustain you. Tonight, I want to come for that small, still voice that makes you hate yourself. That makes you stay hidden in the background because you think to yourself, if anyone ever finds out who I truly am and how I truly am and what I truly think about, that I would be nowhere near this mountain. If anyone knew the thoughts that I have, I'm here to tell you that God can handle all of it. Hallelujah. There is no thought, no addiction. There's no habit. There is nothing that is too great for God to handle. The only thing that can stop you from climbing this mountain is you. 
You are the one that keeps reminding yourself, Shantae, you don't have a degree. You are the one that keeps reminding yourself, oh, well, I don't know what a healthy marriage looks like. There aren't any healthy marriages in my family. How can I be called to the mountain of family when I, I, it's nobody I know was married? Nobody I know, you know, they stay together. How can I be called to the mountain of family? Well, guess what? It's time to be a fish on the mountain. If you are a fish on the mountain, then that means you are one of one. Y'all ever seen a fish on the mountain? I've never seen a fish on the mountain. I'm pretty sure if a fish came out of the water, y'all, I had a fish, but we're not going to talk about it, okay? If the fish came out of the water, it's probably going to die, yes? Y'all think so? But we're fish on mountains. So we are one of one. We have to stand out. You have to set the standard and stop making excuses. How does Destiny Global go into regions and transform it for the kingdom of God? You have to be a fish on a mountain. MJ is taking the Holy Ghost fire that is with inside of him into the mountain of business. Pastor Alicia is taking the Holy Ghost fire on the inside of him into the mountain of fam her into the mountain of family. And Misha is taking God and the kingdom message and the Holy Ghost fire into the mountain of government. Yes, you are called to the mountain of media. Yes, you are called to the mountain of business. And I'm reminded of one of my favorite scriptures in this moment. Thank you, Apostle Dwayne. First John 2 and 20. I have an unction from the Holy One one an anointing from the holy one and i know all things what does that mean if the holy spirit lives on the inside of me that i have access to all things hallelujah what does that mean i have access to all things that means that if i decide to change my career after being in the field for 14 years i don't have to worry about what i'm going to do how i'm going to do it because the holy ghost lives on the inside of me and i take him everywhere i go so he tells me how to create a lesson plan he tells me how to do classroom management he tells me how to build relationships with my students yes and he uses everything i had a student two days ago tell me that she's pregnant i don't know if everybody in here knows this apostle wayne just found out i had my daughter my senior year in high school so God uses everything. I can use my personal story to minister to my student at work. God uses everything. So while you're scaling this mountain, there are two things that I want you to keep in mind. One, I'm a fish. And two, I'm a light. A fish, is, a fish natural habitat is in the water. So if a fish is outside of the water, the only thing that can sustain it is God. That's it. Outside of God, the fish is going to die. Are we clear on that? The only thing that can sustain that fish is God. You have to lean and depend on God, not only to supply you with what you need to stay on the mountain, but for your literal life. It is only in Jesus that you can be sustained. Even humans find it a little hard to breathe when you get higher up on the mountain. So why would you not practice hosting this presence and going up into these high places, right? So you can get so that you can get access to the mountain without the help of you have to have Jesus in order to get access to the high places on this mountain. The higher you go up on the on the mountain, the more influence you have. Then you begin to change into God's original intent for you. God knew long before I knew that I was going to be a teacher, y'all long before I do but I don't but if I don't lean into the Holy Spirit I never tap into the gift of teaching I never know that that's something that God desires for me to do because if I don't spend that personal time with Jesus then I don't know that that's something that I have a passion for I don't know that watching someone journey from not knowing something having a light bulb and now being able to execute it correctly is something that I enjoy doing if I don't lean into Holy Spirit and figure that out so if I didn't lean into the Holy Spirit, I would have never applied for a job that changed the trajectory of my career and my life. So yes, your personal submission to God is important. You don't transform a nation by being scared. You don't transform a nation by holding on to your old self. You don't transform a nation by being comfortable 
or not wanting to change. Whew. It's always been like this. I've been, I know how to, I, y'all, I can do a your dynamic study with my eyes closed, like literally closed. I don't have to use but two brain cells because I've been doing it for so long. It's not comfortable for me to apply for a job that I've never done before. But you also don't, st- you don't transform a mountain by staying in your natural habitat. Apostolic people go. So yes, let's climb this mountain and then let them all in amazement at this fish on a mountain. Hallelujah. Tonight, God specifically pointed out those people who feel like their story is too ugly. They got too many other things going on that th- one thing keeps popping back up. And it hinders them from moving in the area where you feel like God is calling you into. Um, you, you feel like you're an apostolic believer and you're supposed to be doing something. But how can you do that if you're still dealing with this thing? Right? So tonight, I actually want to pray for people. If that's Yes. Um, I want to pray. Um, and if you would like to come to the altar, you're welcome to do that. Um, I want to pray for those people who feel like they're not good enough, who feel like the climb is too hard for them, that the trials and the tribulations that come with climbing up this mountain that are going to come every single time is something that they don't want to deal with. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's interesting. Um, So when I was preparing today, Jasmine kept popping up today when I was sitting and preparing. um, And I just realized right before service that she wasn't going to be here. Um... So I'm going to pray. Say, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you that your presence is here. Hallelujah. And that you give us the strength and that you give us the power to do what it is that you desire to do in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask God that you would continue to work on the inside of Eric. Thank you, Jesus. to show up for him and his family. I thank you, Jesus, that you are present in every single moment, that you cancel now, God, every ounce of self-hatred. I thank you, Jesus, that you are equipping him. I thank you, Jesus, that you are making him the man of God that you have called him to be. And I thank you, Jesus, that he is no longer... Jesus, I command self-hatred to come out now. Hallelujah. Guilt could come out now in Jesus' name. Condemnation to come out now in Jesus' name. Suicide out.
Come on, if you're in the room, help us pray. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you that you are a master, that you are a deliverer. So we thank you, God, that the Spirit of Christ may dwell in this place. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Father, we thank you that the Spirit of liberty rests in this room. Let freedom reside within your people. Let destiny break out. Let futures break out. Let breakthrough come into the room. God, as we enter, as we tread into 2024, your people shall be free. No more shackles. No more bondage. Freedom is ours in the name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. So, Father, we thank you that Jesus reigns as supreme. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and he sits on high. And let everything bow to the name of Jesus. So, Father, as we begin to mark this day, let this be a day recorded in the heavens as a day of deliverance, as a day of freedom. Ministry gifts break through. Money break through. Let this day be a marking of freedom. Hey, God never shake a little groom, never did it. Yandeve shekalaba karapa, yereve shekalebe gunda, yandeve kerapa dedeve. I hear the Lord say, I prophesy, you shall not see Pharaoh no more. Hey, this day shall not be again. This season shall not be again. All things have been made new. Look not to the former things. I prophesy, future, destiny, greatness, future, destiny, greatness. Come alive in this hour. This is your moment. This is your season. Never like before. God's about to do a new thing, a new creation. All things have passed away. So, Father, we seal this in the blood. We seal this in your name. For he is the seal of your apostleship. DGC is the seal of your apostleship. So, Father, allow yourself to be made known. Let DGC stand on the mountain of Richmond, declaring that God is good, declaring the goodness of the Lord. We shall not die. We shall not die. We shall live. We shall live. We shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. All things. All things work together. So, Father, we come against the spirit of disappointment. We come against the spirit of doubt. If you did it before, you'll do it again. Let 2024 be the year of doing it again. You did it for Sarah. You did it for Moses. You did it for Daniel. You did it for David. You did it for Abraham. You will do it for DGC. The Lord says, don't get used to your current mode, your current model, or your current system. The field, the realm of education is about to be upgraded because you're there. And what seems like familiar patterns are going to be technology that this system this mountain has never seen before because you are apostolic you sit in another dimension you sit in a different place and so you are the future in the present and one of the things that God is saying is he's about to introduce you to people places and things where they've been on an old system and you're about to give a new revelation new study habits, new material. The Lord said, don't be even, don't be afraid that he's about to take you on a national level. That in the years to come, you're about to walk on a national level. That you're going to be dealing with policies. You're going to be dealing with systems and laws that are going to govern the field of your expertise. And don't think it's strange that you're going to encounter hardship, 
and that you're going to encounter pushback, it is actually a sign that God is with you. And this pushback is going to be because they think you're not fit. But that's where the fish on a mountain comes into play. Because it's not going to be by a natural mean. It's going to be very supernatural. It's going to be very authentic and very new. So the Holy Spirit says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The Lord also says that because it's his spirit, that though you feel like a fish on a mountain, because rivers of water flow from your belly, you are able to survive in habitats that you're not able to because of the water. So in this season, begin to live from the future into the present. Don't discount or discourage yourself because you've never seen it before. The third thing is no pushback is coming, but you've already been given the victory, thus says the Lord. I knew that tonight, I'm not necessarily going to prophesy, I'm going to impart tonight, but I knew that tonight would be a night when you would step over into something new. And I knew it would catch you off guard, but it is all right. But the Lord says that this is going to be a day that he's going to decide the mantle and the grace of deliverance to your metron. That it's about to open on the inside of you. And that's what began to happen tonight. It wasn't, it, it was what's on you and what you were stepping into. So get ready because even in your ministry posture, and it's going to look different. It's going to be, um, it'll have a ministry context to it, but it'll also have a marketplace context to it. So it won't look just one way. But God's about to bring you into the realm of deliverance. Now, here's going to be the interesting thing. Wow, I do want you to study it. The reality is he's just about to catch you up in it. So there's just going to be supernatural uh, information. There's going to be supernatural revelation. There's going to be supernatural understanding. And much of what you are about to walk in, you're not going to have to study. He's about to give it to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you told me to do, I relay my hands on this, my daughter, this pastor, and the Lord's church. And we release and we impart the grace for deliverance. We thank you that her authority increases this day. We thank you, oh yes, that there is even a sword in her mouth and even at her decree that demons will begin to tremble and demons will begin to run. We thank you for the grace to overturn demonic systems. We thank you for personal deliverance. We thank you for that releasing of territorial deliverance and I thank you that every, oh yes, we command, oh yeah, your confidence. It's got to come up. Self-esteem that try. yet yeah, it's like a tormenting self-esteem that tries to come and speak into your ear, but the Lord declares that this is the last day for the fire of deliverance we release. Oh yeah. The deliverance grace that's on this house. Let Pastor Shante carry it in her mantle. The deliverance grace that's on this movement. Let her carry it in her mouth, in her hands. Get ready to see supernatural, oh yes, yeah, supernaturally, sickness and disease be cursed and released by your decree. Get ready to see the powers of addiction and spirits of infirmity and death be, begin to run at your decree, at your sound, Father. We lay hands as a company and we release this grace as the man of God begin to prophesy this national grace. Oh yeah, this is a sending house. We send this pastor to the nations. We send her voice. We send her sound. We send her authority. We send her weight. We send her revelation. Go, 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 go. I command and we declare doors to open around the nation. Ministry and marketplace open. Ministry and marketplace open. The digital space open. Curriculum, influence, deliverance. Curriculum, influence, deliverance. Let that governmental grace for legislation and policy let it come upon her strong in this season. Catch her up into supernatural, oh yeah. Let this not be a chronological time, but cause her to step up into a realm called Kairos and give her in one moment 
what would have taken 20 years in the, oh yeah, in the natural. Up, 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 up. We speak life into this mantle. Oh yeah. And we cover this gift and we war with what wars against her, with what wars against her mind, with what wars against her mantle, with what wars against her soul, and what wars against her emotions, what wars, oh yeah, against her heart and her home. We declare that there is this stripping of the warfare of this season. Go! Go! We cover and we send. We cover and we send. This apostolic canopy covers and sends new authority. New influence, new weight comes upon her this day. In Jesus' name, Apostle Shirley. In Jesus' name, come on and let's put our hands together and celebrate the Lord who is in our midst. Come on and let's celebrate the Lord who is in our midst. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. For the revelation on tonight that we are indeed fish on a mountain thank you that you have allowed us to dwell in your presence thank you that you are our sustaining voice that you are our strategy that you are our success system thank you that from this house and from this region that you are raising up gifts that will not compromise gifts that will sit in the seat of authority and hear what you have to say to the end that lives are transformed and that your love is revealed and that your great grace and your love towards your people is made known and made manifest. Father, we surrender to the obedience. We surrender to the discipline. We surrender to the discomfort and we say yes to your will. We say yes to the counsel of heaven that was written over our lives before we were formed in our mother's womb. We thank you for the great grace of deliverance. We thank you for the great grace of victory. We thank you for the great grace of wisdom. We shall be wise as serpents, but yet innocent as doves. Father, we lift our hands on tonight. And we thank you for fresh grace for every assignment. Thank you that the guards are changing in the mountains. <laughs> thank you that wicked kings are being dethroned. <laughs> and that the righteous are coming to rule. We thank you that from the mountain, from the base to the top, that because the righteous are ruling, the people will rejoice. Thank you for the rejoicing that I hear in the spirit that will come from the mountains, Father. Hallelujah. That will make your praise glorious. Father, we thank you that grace, fresh grace, will be released on every kingdom citizen that is part of this movement. Thank you, Father, that this region will be marked, hallelujah, by the spirit of excellence. Thank you that those that had their hands on the purses that were corrupt, that the guards are changing now. Thank you, Father, for your will and your love on the mountain of education. Thank you, Father, for your will and your love on the mountain of business. Thank you, Father for your will and your love on the mountain, Lord God, of arts and entertainment. Thank you for your will and your love, hallelujah, Father. Thank you on the mountain of family and religion, God, and media, God. We thank you for your will in every mountain and every sphere of society. Thank you that even as we submit to you, Lord God, that we will ascend, hallelujah, into the places that you have purpose for us. God bless Pastor Shante. Thank you, Father, for the word that you have put in her mouth and the work that you've done. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would seal us all, 
hallelujah, and that even as we leave this place, we will not leave your presence. Thank you for steering us, hallelujah, and steering that which is on the inside of us. Father, we say yes to the counsel of your will. Have your way in and through our lives. We live for you. We breathe in you, and we do have our being. Now may the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide both now, henceforth, and forevermore with the realization that we are indeed fish on the mountain. Make us fishers of men <laughs> as we ascend these mountains. May souls be saved, may systems be reformed, and may hell be horrified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Would you do me a favor and hug the person next to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, as we leave this place, but not his presence. Thank you for joining us online. We appreciate you. We pray that the same grace that we are experiencing in this room, that you are experiencing in your room. In Jesus' name, amen.